I'm excited about being a child of God. And there's no time like now to be a child of God. This is the greatest time ever to be a servant of the true and living God. Because God said that Jesus came to undo everything that Satan did, right? And, and it's very important for us to understand that because we need to understand what exactly did Satan do. But the first thing that he did was he, he, he broke the relationship between God and mankind. That was the first thing he did. The second thing that he did was he brought uh, conflict between the husband and the wife. Third thing he did was bring about silver, sibling rivalry. A perfect formula for a dysfunctional family, dysfunctional community, and a dysfunctional world. If you think I'm lying, look around. See, the family is the source of community. Relationship with God is the source of all things and morality and purity. Justice and equality. So we broke the relationship with man. Man lost his, his connection with God for his getting proper instruction on how he was supposed to live. And by man submitting to his human nature through Satan's deception, which was to lead mankind to believe that God could not be trusted. God was holding back the best from him. And that God wanted him to be a second hand citizen. Surely, God has told you not to touch any trees of the garden. God only told him to touch, not touch wood. Everything else was there. But you see the subtle attack how the enemy plays on your mind. Surely, God knows that the day you eat it, you will become just like him. See, you're a second class citizen. Not realizing that you were created in his image and his likeness. But because no one told you that verbally, you didn't know or understand or realize that that wasn't even an issue. So, she saw that it was good for food. She took it and she ate it. Because this is now flesh of my flesh and bone of my bone, I have now a competition for my devotion to God. She gave it to me to eat, so I ate it. Because I got to keep her happy. That's how it all got started, people. That's what's relevant. Not the stuff. Not the status. Family. It's relationship with God. It's relationship with mankind. That's it. That's the only problem that the world has. Because they don't have a relationship with God, they can't get along with one another. And because they got disconnected from God and thought that the resources were the Foundation for security, stability, and living a good quality of life, man became programmed to pursue the resources. And that's part of Satan's plan. To keep you pursuing the resources so that you don't have time for the source of all resources. And you start to put your confidence in things that are unpredictable, that are uncertain. And that's what we want to talk about today. Because, because of this concept, we worship and idolize people of wealth. We use them as the symbol or the standard of where we are supposed to be, what we are supposed to be like in life. So we're going to talk about ministry to the wealthy today. 1 Timothy 6, 17 through 19. The objective is 
We want to develop a proper perspective of wealth. We want to develop a proper perspective of wealth as born again believers. Because it's our responsibility to teach the world the proper perspective of wealth because of the deception of the enemy and the lie that he's planted in our mind concerning wealth. Develop a proper perspective of wealth. <coughs> the goal, we want to learn how not to trust in wealth. See, God has promised to give you a certain quality of life. So once you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, which guarantees your seat in heaven, it's no longer about whether I'm going to heaven or not. It's about what quality of life am I going to live now that I am a child of God. That's what it is. Because once you're born, you're born. And it's our job as a church to teach you and help guide you how to live a quality of life that lines up with being children of God based on the promises that he has made to us. And that's what's causing such a problem with the church. The church is not able to witness to the world in such a fashion that represents that they're children of God who owns everything. Where they are truly blessed in everything that they put their hands to. And so we, put a, we have a poor example of what serving God looks like, and the example is in such a state that no one wants to follow it. And that's what we want to learn how to do and realize that it's not based on money, not to trust in wealth. That's the goal. These are some strategies that we're going to put in place to help accomplish this. The first strategy is the value of humility. Because the world has told us to value the wrong things. We want to learn the value of humility and the benefit that it brings to the life. The value of humility. The second strategy is we want to understand what true security looks like. True security. Because that's what everybody's about in life. They want security. They want stability, and they want the assurance and confidence that they'll be successful in what they do in life. The third thing, we want to understand the value of goodwill. The value of goodwill, because so long as believers, we've been trying to promote what we believe, rather than trying to promote the value of what we believe. If you're trying to promote something that has no value, it has no interest to people. I don't care how important your stuff is if it don't bring no value to my life. What's the value in serving your God? And you have to be able to show your value, not just talk because anybody can talk. The next thing is we want to understand spiritual investments. Spiritual investments. See, we've been trained by the enemy to invest in the resources. The resources are just that, resources. They're not an end within a means. We want to understand spiritual investments. Because this is the key to living the life that God has called us to live. It is the key to being who God has created us to be. It is the key to us being able to be effective in a lost and dying world. Where we have to compete against all the materialistic things that Satan has established that the human mind has been programmed to pursue. You can talk all the talk you want. But when it comes down to the end of the day, people want to know, can I take care of my business? Yeah. And if what you're offering doesn't give that to me, or it doesn't appear to be working for you, why am I going to try to? And so this is what we have to move to as children of God moving to 2018. If we want to be real effective for the Lord, especially our young people, we got to show them that we have something to offer. Besides, besides just trusting God. Well, what does that look like? God tells you throughout His Word, there's something in it for you if you do this. 
Because he created us to enjoy him and everything that he's created. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 says, Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or put their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. Storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. O Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you, avoiding worldly and empty chatter and the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and thus gone astray from the faith. Let the church say amen. 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 Because we want to have a proper perspective of wealth and resources so we can put our mind in the right direction. In verse 11, we are told to instruct the rich not to be excessively proud of oneself, but to put their hope in the uncertainty of riches. Money cannot buy the things you need the most to be fulfilled and gratified. This is what you have to understand. And the thing that is so important as we've discovered, as we come into the ministry of understanding how to recover from the fall, the first thing we learn is to discover our true identity. See, we live in a world society that has an identity crisis. It's a, it's a society that identifies by our race, by our culture, by our circumstances, our situations, by our jobs, by our issues, and everybody has an identity crisis. No one has, most people haven't really taken the time to discover who they are, why they do what they do. See, and Satan doesn't want you to know who you are because the world, society, and the way of identifying us makes us focus on our differences. Think about that. The biggest struggle that you have with people in your life is your differences. And we've been programmed to use those differences to establish who we really are. And to set standards, standards and values that prevents us from getting along with most people. See, we have to go to the place where we all have something in common. And the one thing that all humanity has in common is that we're all spirits. We are all created in the image and likeness of God. I don't care who you are in the world, we all have that same thing in common. Until we learn how to start there, we will never have any common grounds with anyone. It's not your religion. It's not your likes or your dislikes. It's your spirit created in the image and the likeness of God, and we're all the same. We have different personalities, but that helps us put those personalities in the proper perspective and the proper value as it pertains to having relationships with others. See, God is such a loving God. He gives us the freedom to do whatever we want to do. He just makes sure he supplies us with the enough knowledge to recognize what's going to be beneficial to what it is you want to accomplish in life. And he gives you the freedom to do so. You don't have to accept him. He just makes you clear, makes it clear that if you want to spend eternity with me, this is what you're going to have to do. But you don't have to. He's good with that. He's broken hard about it because he created us not for that. And he knows that being with him is the best thing that can happen to you. That's why we said try it. Because he needs you to meet him like that. Not to prove it to me. Not to prove it to you, anyone else. But if you say you want the best in your life, for your life, shouldn't you at least try the one that promised to give you the best? It only makes sense. You, everything else you're trying in this world is based on what somebody has told you is going to do for you. Why do you trust them? How many times have they disappointed you? Why don't you just trust God and let Him disappoint you then? It's only fair, people. We're not talking about no rocket scientists or no 
before we have this that kind of stuff. We just talk about just practical application. Look at the things you've tried in life to be successful because of what somebody told you. And if you were to ask the right questions, well, are you an expert at this? No. Well, why are you doing it? Bob told me. Well, is Bob an expert at this? No. Is Bob an expert at anything? No. Well, why don't you try it? Because Bob said. See, in our infinite wisdom, we are so the big S word. Look at the things and the people we wanted to put our life in, and, 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 and they can't promise you nothing. But everybody fusses and fights when God, who says he's the creator, promise you all these things. You got to prove it first. Prove you real, God. You're breathing. You hear. What do these people prove? Your job told you they're going to do what for you when you retire? <laughs> tell them to prove it. What are they going to tell you? Test us and see. Because you know, after 40 years, if it ain't true, you're in trouble. It's hard to start over and get what you think you want, right? But we're willing to trust man. It's sure is coming. People, they are, you're paying for a promise. These people don't have nothing. They had an idea that if you do this, I'll do this for you, knowing that most people are not going to use it. That's how they get their money. On a promise that most, when they have to cash in, cancel you. And you paid enough money to pay for a hundred accidents and more. With everybody still making good money, you become a liability. You make us have to fulfill a promise that we never intended to fulfill. But we do with that. And you're going to look for another one that's going to make you a better lying promise. Then you feel good that, yeah, I got a new one. This is what they're going to do for me. My question is tell them to prove it. But we're okay with that. But God has to prove everything. And so this is what we want to make sure that we understand today as we move forward. And what we need to put our hope and trust in. Because money, I'm telling you. No I have no problem with money. I have no desire not to have money. Alright? I would like to have as much of it as I can get. Because God said I could get all that my mind can imagine. And the numbers that I've imagined about the money that I can have, he says he got some that I ain't never thought of yet. Now, if he can beat the numbers in my head, I want to see it. So I want you to understand what I'm actually sharing with you today. But I don't have a pursuit behind it. I'm not pursuing the money. I'm not doing things for the money. I'm doing things because I want to please God. Why? Because God said, pleasing Him, there's something in it for me. Matter of fact, He said, pleasing Him has everything in life that I could ever imagine. And if anybody's promise I'm going to invest in, it's going to be His. Why? Because up to this point, He has proven Himself to me every single time I need it. So, I mean... I ain't the smartest, I ain't the smartest apple in the, in the bag, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't the slowest either. Now, if he's, if I tested him and he's proven himself true, I gotta decide, you know what? Well, I'm just gonna roll in this thing with all I got. Well, I decided 34 years ago that I was gonna roll in this thing with all I got. And I've invested everything that I have in it. And it's paid off. Like it invest, it's a long-term investment now. 
with short-term benefits. This is what you have to understand. Short-term benefits, long-term investments, but short-term benefits, short-term benefits too. See, this is all been proven to me. And so I understand it's not the money. I understand the money is just another resource. <laughs> See, it's, it's different resources. You are resource. But God is the one that's promised. So I put my energy toward pleasing God. Because money is not the source. He says, tell them not to put their trust in money. Money will never fulfill your psychological needs in life, which must be ongoingly satisfied for people to maintain their best performance and well-being. You know what I just said? Those things that you need to operate on a high level, those things that need to be fed, fed or taken care of, are psychological. That means they are here. And it's been programmed by God to only be satisfied and gratified in a certain way. When these needs are not maintained, the ability to do something successfully or efficiently diminish. Because it's a psychological mindset that you have. Think about yourself personally. If things that you know need to be going right for you to believe and understand that life is well, but they're not going that way. Doesn't it impact the way you approach things? Mm -hmm. If you start to realize that your job is not going the way that they promised, and the things that you need uh, are part of the things that they told you, are you still as excited to go to that job the next day as you were when you thought that stuff was working? Mm -hmm. See, it's psychological. And that's what the enemy knows. But he puts us in a place, a prison, where we feel we have no other choice. choice. Because he dares you to look inside yourself to find a place where you don't have to depend on other people to have fulfilled these things. That's one of your greatest fears, right? Man, if I... Because what are the first thing you said you have an idea? I don't have no money. <laughs> Do you have a job you don't like? Okay. Take the idea that you have, start it part-time, where you don't have to live off it. And that job will be your encouragement <laughs> to work hard at it. Because you don't know where you're going, but you know you don't want to continue the direction you're going where you're at, right? So that's what you do. Because the enemy will tell you, you ain't got enough money, man. God was saying, man, look, God the bank, man, he lending money. I'm going look, man, you know, I said, what you doing? Are you all right, man? He said, man, no, no, I'm, I'm ready to go, man. What you, where you going, man? I said, what would you do if you really wanted to be happy? He said, man, you know what I really want to do? He said, I really want to you know, look, you know, give me a little sandwich bag, cart and go sell sandwiches. I said, what you waiting on? Man, you know, I ain't got the money. Man, ain't got the money. I just told him, do it on the side. Oh, you got the answer for everything, though. <laughs> I said, no, man, that's the way it is, you know. I mean, you're going to retire soon. You can start it now on Saturdays. He said, well, I don't know why nobody ain't started on an auction. I said, it's yours. They're waiting on you. After all these years, they want to start it. Shouldn't they tell you something? Now it's on your mind again. You at the bank, I'm sure you can figure out how to get you a few quarters. <laughs> Good gracious, I know there's got to be some kind of benefit on this job that promised you that they were going to take care of you, right? This will be a way to show that they care about you, right? Give me a small business loan or something. I said, dude, I said, man, you know what? The graveyard is full of great ideas <laughs> because of fear. And so, and but this is the point. Has privilege opportunity, but too afraid to break away out of that prison that he is tired and sick of. But see, we have to understand that God has put it inside of us, not outside of us. And the enemy don't want you looking inside. And I said, man, look, I'm watching a lot of the brothers, man, starting a lot of business when they was working. Doing it part-time, did for years, I said, they retired now, man, and they rolling like champs. They got to live off it, don't need it for nothing, because their work and retirement is taking care of all their responsibilities. This is just a piece of icing on the cake. I said, but you got to have some kind of plan. I said, when you ain't got money, you got to do what you can do. 
And that's what I'm telling you. It's not the money. It's what God has put inside of us. And are we willing to trust Him to bless the things that we put our hands to? We trust everybody else. And act, it's not like He's asking you to do something for them. You've been trusting somebody and something all your life, and most, if not all, have disappointed you and let you down. And you just keep changing and swapping, hoping to find somebody that's going to do something that cannot be done. Because they all after the same thing you have. How much of this money can I keep? And how much do I want to share with those that are in this circle with me? And the one that owns and controls get to choose that. Not you. They don't pay nothing. It fits their business plan. They're looking for that one that's okay but not making nothing. And they're willing to fire and move and change till they find it. And you've got to decide, am I willing to move and change till I find it? Or am I going to try to make people do something that don't fit into their plan? Of life? And God has given us a plan that we need to follow. Because one of the downfalls of a lot of other people is they're overcompensated for, to fulfill these needs, these psychological needs. Why does a man need 10 cars? Why does he need 50 pounds of gold around his neck? Why does he really need a swimming pool in his house? Well, you know you don't really enjoy swimming unless you got people to play with and have fun with. Then, well, the only reason they're coming over, <laughs> look out, poo. They don't really care nothing about me. I, I eat, I feel good, look at them. They don't care nothing about me. Look, they have tearing the stuff all up. <laughs> <laughs> if that is what you think makes you happy, hey, man, I, I created it to live. Enjoy yourself. If break it out, fix it. If I can't fix it, don't worry about it. But you, if you've been told those things are your identity and what makes you successful, you don't want nobody breaking it, do you? You don't want nobody messing it up, do you? But you need the next person to see your success. <laughs> see, but it's supposed to be about enjoying it, not worshiping it, spreading the wealth. If it gets dirty, there's people that make a living cleaning. But if you all stitch and tight, you don't want them to get dirty because you don't want to pay nobody to clean. Or you don't want to take the time. See, it's a self-centered mind. You're trying to figure out how you keep all the money. And unless you share with others, you think the better off you'll be. Enjoy it, man. You can't take it with you. Create relationships. It's about that real life. Because these people that have all that money, when things, when, when things get down to the nitty gritty, they look for somebody to care about them. And so they go in disguise and cognito, trying to act like they don't have them. You meet them, they drive an old 44, old 62 beat up Chevy. Because they don't want you, they don't want to believe that you want them for that stuff. Now, what kind of life is that? Why'd you get it? Now you gotta pretend you don't have it? What? Because you are insecure, you are not gratified, you're not satisfied, and the things that you thought would get you that, don't do it. Because what you really want, the people that like you and your stuff, but like you will. <laughs> Because if they like you more, you'll see them trying to take care of your stuff. Right? And that's what you really want. It ain't the one way to get it. You start treating God the same way. You like him more than you like his stuff. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's about love. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Love your neighbors as yourself. I know people that will help you, but they let it be known that it's a burden. <laughs> I grew up around that, and I chose 
I will never, ever allow anyone to even have an inkling or think that it's a burden to me to help them. I want people to have the freedom and the comfort to know that this is all right. You help me, it's all right. It's not something I got to be like, oh God. See, that's what the blessings are about. It's about putting others before yourself, putting God before yourself. And he is a loving father, so that's my boy right there. Go in the room and see what I got for you. <coughs> Ain't it nice? So, Daddy, you did, I know. I just did. <laughs> now, you glad he did, ain't you? <laughs> but if you think he owes you something, you gonna go in the room like, what? I just knew the day would have been the day that they would have thought of me. But nobody did. Because you have been given a lot. That you think you are owed something and you earn something. God didn't create you to earn. He didn't create you to work for a living. He created you to live, to work. So that he could take care of you. And that, and that, isn't that what you really want? You like to get married. And, and let your wife know, look, you covered. You ain't got to work, baby. Take Join the castle. And she's not required or commanded to keep it clean. <laughs> so you still messing up. It's conditional. You can enjoy this castle if you take care of my stuff, because I had to work hard to get it. And it represents me. And it's got to look a certain way. So when my peeps come over, they can see me. No, man. It's to enjoy. And when it doesn't become an obligation, taking care of it becomes a joy. <coughs> Strategy number one. The value of humility. See, because we can't get to this proper place if we're not humble. See, when you're humble, it doesn't matter how your stuff look. You know, if, if you let it look a certain way all the week long, then someone say they're coming over, don't you go into a cleansing frenzy. Don't you go into a cleansing frenzy. Was it was good enough for you and the people that you care about the most? <laughs> it should definitely be okay for the strangers or the, the associates or whoever they're coming over. Think about what I just said now. You're supposed to be living with the people that mean more to you than anyone else in the world outside of God. That means because of that love, you want them in an environment constantly every day that brings out the best in them and represents them. How do you think it feels to them when it's looked like this all week long, now all of a sudden it's this cleaning regimen that you have instilled for this day? Taking away their normal freedoms, and now they're on a mission to slay to get this place in shape. I wonder what they said. Well, they don't clean enough for me like that. I come home at least, I come home every day. <laughs> from somewhere. <laughs> don't nobody seem to care how it impacts me or how I think about it. What's so special about these people? They ain't here serving you, I am. Why are we giving them such presentation? It's all about your pride. It's all about how you've been programmed of what your identity is. Your identity is not that castle you live in. It's those people inside that castle. Because I tell you, when they come over and your children are baby's kids, they ain't gonna notice much about the castle. <laughs> they ain't even gonna think about the castle. They're going to think about the horrified time you had when they visited you. Who wants to come back after that? Who wants to come back? But we have to understand what is life really about. We have to understand, people, it's about relationships. 
Can people be comfortable in your world? Can they be free to be who they are? And if they make a mess, can you be free to know that it's all right? That God's going to take care of your stuff. And if you lose your stuff because you're allowing people to be free in it, He's free to give you more. Value of humility. Proverbs 11, 12 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Proverbs 11, 12. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. Pride brings a curse of the low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. Proverbs 29, 23. See, a broken heart and a contrite spirit are the perfect likeness of Jesus Christ. And the experiences that he went through as he walked through this earth. And what he wants us to go through. Let us truly understand what enjoying life is all about. So that we can truly represent God as we walk through this world. Where people will be attracted to us. You know, one thing that, that we, we were taught growing up is that we're going to be here for people. If you're in the neighborhood and you need help, you can come to our house. Your kids need a place to stay, they can stay at our house. And they were fed without any grudging or anything. But God always blessed that there was always enough. Always. And the key was to make the people feel comfortable being there, not as though they were a bird. By learning to coexist based on who they are or were, not who you expected them to be. Having the heart to adjust to those in your world to make sure they're comfortable. Oh, the mighty power of God that you will see move in your heart and your life when you're willing to treat his people that way. He does awesome things to you and to them to help us move closer into who God has created us to be so that when people see us they're gravitated toward us and they have a great experience with us but you got to have freedom to be willing to lose that stuff that the world has told you was so important because when you get that mindset those things very rarely You don't find stuff getting torn up. I'm not talking about normal use or something. I mean, I do that. But you'll see how God moves and those things rarely happen. Why? Because we have to understand what wealth is really about. It's not about the stuff. The wealth is a relationship with God that keeps you freely open to the resources at all times. When you have that kind of freedom and access, there's no need to store up. There's no need to have this power that you can look at and feel like you've been successful. You know when you look at your bank account sometimes, and you got a certain number in your mind, that if that certain number is there, you're like, hey, buddy, hey, you set, man. I'm good. Life is good. You don't care about nothing. It's never change your mind, I mean, really. Well, this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Those numbers that you see don't compare to the source. You should feel the same way and greater about the relationship you have with God because you know He has more than all of that. That can never run out. That you're going to always be straight. You're going to always be good. But you're not going to know until you put your trust in it. In those tough places where your mind says, you go there, you know what's going to happen. You know where you come from. You know where you come from. And you right at that place, because a situation like this is what took you there the last time. And you become afraid. Man. And you don't trust God. You trust the little wisdom and knowledge that you know. And you, let's face it, you where you at because of what you know. You are where you are right now because of what you know. So if you knew how to get to the other place, you would not be there. So who are you blaming for where you're at? 
God says he has wisdom. He has knowledge to get you beyond where you are. But you think it's the stuff. All you like right now, all you need is just a piece of information. <laughs> Tell the truth. You don't need the stuff. You need a piece of information. What do I do right here to get to over Yahweh? That's all you need, and that don't, that's not what it is. See, because once you tell the mind how to think it, it'll put it into action. And be, beyond your thinking, things will start to happen that are leading you in that direction. But check out the enemy. When you start heading down the road, he said, oh, you better be careful. You walking on new ground here. That, that don't look right. Based on what? Based on what? That, but you know, that's what got you where you are. You need some new stuff to get here, and you ain't going to get it until you keep stepping. So how you gonna get it? God said he's gonna guide your steps. He didn't say I'm gonna tell you what the steps will be because you want to know what the steps are, don't you? He said, look, I'll guide your steps. Just start walking. Then your mind start working. Now your mind wasn't able to tell you to walk that way. But now that you're walking this way, it's got all this information for you, right? You know, y'all think this is right. You know, that don't, that don't look right like that. Well, if you were so smart. Why couldn't you tell me when I was pounding you for the last year or two trying to figure out how to get out of that mess? <laughs> then all of a sudden the Lord moved on me one day and told me what to do. And now you got all this information. Like I said, take your mind and put it in your head. Like right now, where are we all at right now, right? Why don't you look at where you're at right now? Look at your mind. See, how do we get here? We're here, okay? How do we move? Which way do we go? What do we do? No, no, do you? You don't have a clue. <laughs> Why do you keep talking to me? Well, I'm trying to tell you which way to go. See, this is what's going to happen. You're going to follow me from now on. I'm going to follow the Lord. And this is the thing I know about it. When he tells me something, he makes it so clear that you can't doubt it. And when he tells me, I'm confident in it. I'm confident in it. It's only when I start walking, you start talking. And I give it to you, you pick a good case. <laughs> Based on your limited understanding. But I need a little more than what you have to offer. See, because you don't create nothing. You just store stuff. Yeah. Right? What I need now is not stored. It's new. And it comes from the one that gives me. He's God. So you're going to follow me from now on. Now that takes boldness. Because you've been programmed to believe that this is you. He's a good imposter. He's a good imposter. Just remember those conversations, like, what's going on in your head right now? What are you thinking? I know more than one person talking. <laughs> I know it's more than one conversation going on there. Who is, who is that? Who is that? And guess what? The conversations never happen until you hear something God. Think about it. He's Antichrist. He's Antichrist. God gives you a great plan, great instruction, and you know it when you receive it, you'll be like, yes! Thank you, God! God, I didn't see that! That was so simple. That what makes it bad, right? It's so simple. It wasn't no rocket science stuff. It was so simple. Why? This is a storage unit. It's not, it does not create thought. It doesn't. It stores information. This stores information. Instructions come from within, from the spirit. This is not him. This is not you. 
You were held captive since the day you were born. Spirit created the image and likeness of God. You were doing it. You know. You know mama told you not to do that. Yeah, but. Who's but? Who's that? Have it your way. You deserve a break today. You should be able to do whatever you want to do. Program from the world since the day you were born to the TV, mostly. And everybody that stays in front of you, who stays in your ear, trying to get partners in their madness. Think about it. So this is not you. And I lost my stuff. Because we are spirit created the image and likeness of God. That part that was held dormant through Jesus Christ, he becomes free. But he has a tremendous job on his hands. He now has to take the mind, which is his tool, and reprogram it in the things of God. And the things of God come through the Spirit as we go into the Word of God and we have a relationship with God and commune with God. We develop that relationship by like talking to you and we start to talk to Him. We establish a relationship that Adam had that was broken where God was training Adam in the things of heaven. Now we are positioned in Christ to get back into that relationship where God can talk directly to us. That's why we have the Word of God. Because the mind has been programmed by Satan to adapt and try to retake over things for Satan. So it starts to contradict the information that God will give you, which goes beyond human understanding. That's why it's called faith. You must believe it when you don't understand it. Because you won't understand it until you believe it and walk in it. Then the knowledge is given to you. The world is programming you. You need to get the knowledge and understanding before you try it. That doesn't work. Because there's so much more to learn. Because it's an ongoing thing. And that's what I want to leave you with today. I want to stop right here. But the thing you have to understand, as we were saying, is that you have to understand the value of humility and know what humility looks like. And really ask yourself about why you do the things the way you do it. Nine times out of ten, there's some kind of pride in it somewhere. Why? Because it represented who I thought I was. This stuff does not represent me. That stuff does not represent you. God represents you. These are just stuff that he's given us to enjoy. They were never intended to be some kind of status symbol about who we are. Who we are is who we are to God. Who does God say you are? That's who you are. It's not your car. It's not your house. That's not the, that's not the sign of success. The sign of success is your relationship with God and your relationship with the people in your world. That's it. Because when you get old, that's all that's going to matter. As I see my mother, my mother getting older and deteriorating, the thing that I see that she values the most is the fact that I freely give my time to her without making her feel like she's imposing on me. I never thought that could make a person feel so fulfilled. Love is whatever I got to go through to make this work for everybody that I love. Hey, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. That's what wealth is about. It's not going to cut me short. It's not going to put me nowhere but at a great place. Because you're doing it because that's what God did for me. That's what he does for me on a daily basis. In spite of me, he just keep on loving me. In spite of me, he just keep on looking out for me. 
In spite of me, he just keep on making sure I'm all right. In spite of me, he wants me to feel at peace. No matter how often I got to come to it. No matter how often I mess up. What he's given me already. He never wants me to feel like it's a bird coming to him. Because he don't run out. So if he don't run out, I can't run out. That's what wealth is, people. And that's my challenge to you. How are you and your relationship apart? That's what's going to matter at the end. Because even those that thought it didn't matter, ain't nothing like being alone and can't help you. See, ain't nothing like being alone when you want to be alone. <laughs> there comes a time in life, you ain't going to want to be alone. That's when you're going to find out what's really important. I don't know where this finds you. At least I know where it finds you. Today. It's got to be. <coughs> you're willing to find the true wealth of God. You're ready to really experience the abundant life. You ain't the stuff, people. It ain't the goals and objectives you're trying to reach, unless that goal and objective is this, to love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. It does no harm to his neighbor. Unconditional love that requires no change, inspires change. You, want to, you should want to become an inspired change. So you have to inspire people to respect you, to love you, to appreciate you. And you have to be patient and allow God to make it happen for you. Realizing that all this stuff is not who you are. This is not who you are. It is in here. That part that this always overrides. Because it's going to cost too much of your stuff. Or too much time away from getting your stuff. Let it go. Good day to give your life to the Lord. Awesome day to give your life to the Lord. Great day to say, you know what? I'm finishing strong and starting strong. I'm going to walk in the true wealth of God. And that's the ability to love every single person in God, regardless of what it costs you. Whether it's the music, I want you to think about what we talked about, I want you to fight against whatever may go on in your mind that will prevent you from making the decision that you need to make today. Give the Lord a hand for it.